I have it on good authority that it is the most vile, most irritating device ever conceived by man. Well, at least this man. Gentlemen, welcome back to the wife's sewing room. Now, guys have been asking me to do some cutesy little electronical, and so I'm happy to oblige. That's what we're doing today. And the little bastard was a cute little circuit that I, I made. Essentially, what it is, it's a speaker and uh, an Arduino type thing, a microcontroller. And all it does is it's battery powered. You stick it somewhere hidden and at random intervals, it chirps, makes, you know, an electronical noise, drives people fucking bananas. <laughs> anyway, I gave the last one away. My wife was going to club me, but I think the statute of limitations, she's probably forgotten about the last one. So I'm going to make another one just, just so I have it on hand. Now, I just want to reassure you gentlemen, before you peace out and go and watch NASCAR videos, when I first started into the electronics as a hobby, it's really intimidating because one, you don't know the lingo. Two, people make it more, much more complicated than it needs to be. There's, for some reason, people want to feel really smart about themselves, so they, they make it almost Byzantine in how they explain things. This is not going to be that. I, I'm going to show you. It's super not rocket surgery. In fact, it's so easy, even I can do it. And as I'm sure you're all aware, according to the YouTube comments, I am the biggest idiot on the planet. So, if I can do it, I'm going to talk in the familiar parlance of our day here that everybody can comprehend, and there's not going to be any bullshit. All we got to do is get the ones and zeros out of the brain box and into a speakometer. And I chose the MSP430 uh, from Texas Instruments because it's super cheap. An Arduino board like this is 30 bucks. Yes, you can get them from Hong Lo Charlie in Guangzhou for three bucks. But I don't like to go that way because I'm, I'm not smart enough to troubleshoot it for four hours. You know, I just don't want to do that. I don't, I don't like dicking around that way. I'll dick around plenty of other ways, just not that way. The beauty about this is it runs on 3.3 volts. The Arduino runs on 5 volts. And this chip pops right out and you can stick it in your circuit board. The Arduino, you can't do that. If you pop out the chip, you got to add some more components, yada, 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 add some complexity. This is the simplest board for doing what they call embedded uh, microprocessors. And essentially, we're not going to use this whole board. We're just going to pop this chip out and use it after it's programmed. Just going to use this board to program it. So we're gonna get started here, and just like baking a pie, you gotta do your mise en place. And what that means is you gather your components. Luckily for us, we can just do cut and pastry uh, from stuff that we find on the gargler. For instance, here's a perfect circuit from this guy, unofficial Odoon, blah, blah, blah. And this'll run a speaker for us. Here's our output from the microcontroller. Here's uh, a whole bunch of passives and a PNP, rather NPN, transistor and a speaker no big deal nothing intimidating there all we got to do is assemble the components and this uh, this particular one is uh, from this guy he makes really nice ones it's picks pig hicks.com pig h i triple x.com make sure you use the incognito window you don't want your wife thinking you're looking at uh, naked ladies it just so happens i got the transistors out so we're looking for an npn uh, 2N222, which is a very standard. Now we got the NPN BJT. I'm going to pick up some resistors and capacitors. Conveniently, all the values are printed on the schematic. Now we gathered up all our components for the speaker circuit and laid them out in the proper orientation. I'm just going to grab a breadboard here and then we'll put all the components in the breadboard and test it out before we do the final soldering. This allows us to get all the bugs out and easily add components and jumpers and all sorts of stuff like that. So I got our little amplifier here. That's that BJT, Bipolar Junction Transistor. And that's acting as a dirty little amplifier. No big deal because we want it the dirtier the better. And here's a little speaker. These are capacitors and resistors doing capacitance and resistance stuff. All breadboarded up. All we got to do is feed it 5 volts into here and 5 volts into here. And then an input signal to actually make this thing vibrate. The input signal is going to come from the MSP430 brain box. That's what we're going to look at now. So there's the brains of the operation. Unlike yours truly, not much to look at. You take your double ender here and you 
poke the pokey bit in the pokey bit receptacle and do the uh, same thing on the other side. Now I will tell you that I'm going to gloss over some of the fuckery required to get this software going. However, if we look here, this is Energia. It's pronounced Energia, but, but fuck it, I speak American. There's the Arduino IDE, Integrated Development something something, and here is Energia. You can see the family resplendence, and it's essentially the same thing. Just a few little naming conventions difference. We got dust blinking lights in, and we had the little doo-doo from the confuser, so we know it's all chooched up. Now we're gonna program her. So I got that code all written, or rather bodged together, and what it's doing is on random intervals, it's making this pin go high, which turns on that LED. Of course, that pin, we're going to change the pin, and it's going to make a square wave. Bang! So here's the code here, little bastard annoyance beeper. We set the pin for the speaker to this particular pin. You'll notice that's different than in the Arduino IDE. You have to have that underscore. That nomenclature, it doesn't work unless you use that nomenclature. That is a pitfall for uh, newbies, and that took me days of pulling my hair out to figure out. Days! Then we set a variable for duration and we give it a value of a thousand we set the frequency of the tone that we want we set a counter value and then we set the trigger value uh, so what we do here is in the void setup this little bit of program only runs when you first start up the board and then this loop continually loops through so we're telling the board hey get ready we want that speaker pin to be an output. Now if you look down here at the body of the code, there's really not much to it. And I'm sure there's more expedient ways to do it. I'm not a coder, but you know, basically, if you know C programming, look away now. So what we're doing is first time through the loop, we take that counter value that we set at zero and we increment it. So we add one to it. So now the counter value is one. Then we ask the computer to, to look at that counter value or the trigger value which we set to one up here if it is equal to the counter value then do what's in the brackets here so what it does is it resets the counter value to zero then it sets the trigger value to a random number between one and five then it sets the duration to a random number between 200 and 2000. These are gonna be milliseconds, so that's two tenths of a second and two seconds, that's how long it'll pulse for. And then the frequency, uh, we'll set the frequency in hertz to a random number between the minimum of 800 and the maximum of 1600 hertz. Then we tell the computer to turn on the speaker for the frequency and the duration, which is also random in between these bounds. Then after it's done that, it sits and waits for a second. Now, while it's waiting, it's eating up juice. It's, it's eating up battery power. So this is the newbie way to do it, and this is the way I'm going to do it. It's not the right way to do it. Then we hit the upload, and it will work away. Done uploading. We are golden. And the battery we're going to use is a lithium cell, and it's not rechargeable, but they're used in fire suppression systems, and they have to be replaced on a time basis. So 99% of the time, they're still fully charged, but because it's a safety system, they change those batteries out. So places have boxes and boxes of these batteries. And here's the moment of truth. Try not to let the smoke out. I think that's right. Do to do, do to do, do to do, nothing happening. So now we come to the not so fun part, troubleshooting what the hell we did wrong. Well, I spent a couple hours dingle farting around with this and I couldn't get her to chooch. I think it's got something to do with the five volts here and this 222 NPN. I just gave up. So here's the setup here. And the best part about this is it's gonna prove Cunningham's law yet again. So now we can take the temporary setup and make it semi-permanent on some Vero board. Okay, you got the Vero board up. Unfortunately, I can't get it to run with the chip in uh, because this LD33, the only one I had in the junk drawer, is outputting 0.7 volts. Son of a diddly. Took me a while to find that out. So all I got is this stupid thing. Look at the size of it. I guess it beats a trip to the local electronics store. 
60 miles away and overpriced by a thousand percent. Oh, Canada. You guys in the States, you don't know how good you got it. Quite literally sorting the fly shits from the peppers. Banana for scale. You got to stick at the little tab on the what's his who's it's in the right spot. Otherwise, no es bueno. Smoky, smoky. Now, one thing I didn't add was input protection. So if I get the polarity wrong, it's going to fry it, which is bad. But, hey, yeah, what are you going to do? Doesn't sound very happy. I got it in test mode on the batteries. I added some caps there just for shits and giggles. Sometimes, you know, it's JFM to me. So sometimes you add something, sometimes you take something away and it works. Anyway, it's not working on a single battery, so I put it on the power supply. It's five volts and about a million amps, and now it's working. So I think the problem is we got to get a million amps or more volts or something. So I'm going to series these batteries. Instead of just one, I'll have two in series. Well, now I've got two batteries, and I just run the positive to the negative of the other battery and then input into here, working like a charm. Pretty plug fugly. We're oh, just doing the testing for. Oh, you stupid thing. It always turn off right when you need it. Well, 0.8 milliamps this thing draws. It's incredible. Low power. And then, and it's 150 some odd when it's driving you right up the wall. More knowledgeable programmers usually avoid the use of sleep for timing events longer than tens of milliseconds. What the hell does that mean? What are we supposed to use? Fuck. Okay, so what I've done is I've added a counter and then it just goes through and counts to whatever, 150. And every time it goes through the loop, every, every click of one, it's gonna sleep for 15 milliseconds. Wow. That is not good. So I'm not quite sure what's going on. <laughs> well, obviously, but I have a feeling that the tone, like it sets, it turns on the, the speaker and the frequency for the duration, and it continues on through the thing. It doesn't stop there until that duration is completed. So I think what I'll have to do, I'm gonna try putting a delay of the duration inside this bracket, and then it'll go into the sleep. See if that works. Went from 79.79 milliamps to 1, 0 0.1 milliamps. Seven thousand times lower. Well, I think these big old lithium cells will last well into the next century. So we're running the code now. It's all set up to drive my wife crazy tomorrow. And check it out in idle it's in micro amps that is drawing less amperage than a hung low tangent charlie brand of chinese calipers and we all know the size of the battery that those run on all right here we go Yeah. 